Okay, this morning we're going to be making pizza pies, okay? Another name for that is calzone. Okay, so it's, a, it's an Italian product, similar to that of pizza. You can use the same ingredients that you do use for a pizza, but the difference is that you're going to be folding it rather than leaving it open, okay? So I've got my strong flour here. You will require 250 grams of strong flour. I've got slightly less because I'm not making the full amount that you're going to be making next week in your group. I've already added a teaspoon of sugar, which is the food for the yeast. So already there, I'm going to be adding a teaspoon of salt or slightly less because my ingredients is less. You need about one teaspoon. I'm going to go for half. A teaspoon of dried yeast and it's fast acting yeast because we will not have a chance to um, allow our dough to proof or pie to proof. So we, we, are, we are using fast-acting yeast. Then I'm going to be adding a bit of olive oil okay, to help with the texture of my dough. Right, I'm going to mix these ingredients in first. Then I'm going to go and add my water. Okay, Remember, when using yeast, you need to ensure that you're using warm water if it's too cold, the yeast won't activate, it won't work at all. If it's too hot, then the water will kill the yeast and it won't work. So, warm water. You will need between 140 and 150 mils of warm water next week. Okay, for yours. And the aim is to get into a slightly sticky dough. Because I did not measure my water, I'm having to go and add it gradually. So I'm not going to dunk everything in. And I'm seeing how it responds. You are going to measure your water next week. So 140 to 150 of warm water. Okay. Let's get in there. So does that mean I put all that 150 to 140 water in or do I put it in slowly? Add it in slowly. Just in case you haven't measured accurately. Okay. Because once you've added too much water, you cannot remove it. Abdi, listen. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. I don't need my measuring jug anymore. So I'm going to put that in the sink. Don't need any more water. And I'm just going to knead this for a little bit of time. Next week, you're expected to knead for about five to seven minutes. And that helps to... Um, disperse the yeast and for all the ingredients to be blended in evenly. My surface is clean. You know what? I will leave. I'm going to need this for a little while. Not on the surface, in the bowl. Next week, you're expected to need on the surface. While one person is needing the other person, or two people um, could be preparing the filling. Okay? Need it for a little while. And then I'm going to assemble all my filling. Okay. So next week, rather than kneading in the bowl, you are going to put a bit of flour on your surface and knead for about five to seven minutes. Okay. It hasn't been five minutes, but I'm tired of needing, so I'm going to leave it there. So you need to remember that you are going to need for how many minutes? Five, five. Seven minutes. five to seven minutes, okay? Because I'm working on my own. I need to go into my filling, okay? So I'll leave this here for now. Okay, my hands are okay to carry on. I need to prepare my filling. I don't need this bit of sugar anymore. I'll to the side. So I've got some chicken here. I'm going to prepare my filling. I've got a bit of chicken that was cooked. It's already cooked. So whatever protein you're going to add, similar to the of your pizza, it needs to be pre-cooked. So you wouldn't go and put um, raw chicken in your filling. So I've got chicken already cooked and I've got a bit of peppers in there. Um, and I've got a bit more pepper. 
The thing is, I had this already prepared, um, left over from another lesson that was in the fridge, so I wouldn't go and do another bit. So I'm using the same, but that's the reason why you've got a bit of onion and peppers already there. But I'm still gonna use a bit of this, okay? I'm adding a bit of mixed peppers. Not too much onion because I've got onion in that mixture already. So just a bit. Okay. I've got sweet corn. I'm not going to use all of it because... What's this one? Jalapenos. Jalapenos. I've got jalapenos. Okay. Cheese. Okay, normally we put our cheese on top or the bottom and then on top. I'm going to have to mix it all in. So it does not look appealing because I'm mixing everything together. I already see some, um, Samaya's face. I just said, oh, what's that? It doesn't look appealing, but I promise you it will taste lovely. Okay, so my cheese goes in. Um, I've got, you need a bit of moisture. Okay, so I'm going to add some chopped tomatoes. I'm gonna go for the some of the juice as well. I need the moisture. And even though I'm using these ingredients, you can go and choose um, what filling you'd want to put into your calzone or pizza pies. I think that's enough. I don't want it to be too tangy. You can leave that there. Then I'm going to go and add a bit of flavor. So I've got a bit of dried mixed herbs I'm gonna add it's up to you again if you want to add dried mixed herbs if it's up to you if you want to go and add fresh coriander for example to yours okay the dried mixed herbs a bit goes in I like my chili so I'm adding a bit of chili quite a bit but this one is not too spicy so I'm adding quite a bit of chili to get the taste and a bit of black pepper And then my last ingredient is some barbecue sauce. I'm going to mix these together and then see how moist it is. Remember your cheese is going to melt as well while it's cooking. That looks fine Okay, so far. Mix that in. We could go for alternative um, protein as well. So for example, you don't want to use chicken. If you like tuna, you could go for tuna, you could go for bacon, you could go for a bit of minced meat, it's up to you. Okay, you could go do vegetarian option. You don't have to add any um, meat to it. You can go for vegetarian option as well. That looks moist enough, okay? So at the moment, it's not looking appealing, okay? Because we've mixed everything up okay I'm gonna go back now for my dough just ensure so that my surface is nice and clean because I need to use it for my dough I need to ensure that my surface has a bit of flour on it to prevent my dough sticking and I'm just going to show you how to assemble one So not too much flour, even now I think it's even too much now. Because if you use too much flour at this point, your dough is going to go dry. You don't want that. I feel as if I'm going to sneeze. Black pepper. So my dough is here. Okay. Stop fidgeting, please sit down. Okay, so you have double the amount of this dough. Okay. Put your shirts in. Yeah, you the same for you. Right, so I'm gonna separate my dough. Okay, this should be okay for one. I'll go a bit more. It's important not to make um, when rolling the dough not to make it too thick or too thin. I'm gonna recommend half a centimeter. Okay, if you look on your ruler. 
um, just before the lesson or while you're at home or just before the lesson um, what half a centimeter thickness is then that's similar to what I want you to roll the thickness of your um, pizza pies okay so separate the dough at this point you can all join in so divide the dough into maybe six recommendation is six pieces put them into balls and then we're going to roll them out in a circular way okay in a circular shape doesn't have to be perfect circle I won't get a perfect circle Mrs. an expert at doing this I normally tend to ask her to do it but I'm gonna try doesn't have to be perfect because you can finish the ends at the, um, you know that give a decorative finish to hide the um, incorrect shape or abnormal shape at the end so miss will be able to get this in a circle already perfect circle but I can't it's not too bad though mm. but I'm talking too quick don't you see it and I'm ensuring that I've got enough flour underneath so I can pick it up. Not bad. Again, not too thin, not too thick. The thicker the dough is, then the longer it's going to take to cook. But if it's really thin as well, then you'll find that it's going to be difficult for you to work with and your filling may poke through or come out. Okay? I think that's almost a circle. I'm, I'm happy with that. Right, so my filling. I'm just going to put my filling on maybe one side of that dough. Not too much, don't get carried away because you put too much filling in. Then it's going to be difficult for you to close the pie. I do need a bit of water actually. I should have kept that jug. I'm not going to add any more to it because I don't want to, I want to be able to close it quite easily. Without my filling es escaping. Okay, I need a tiny bit of water. Okay, and that's to help to seal my calzone. So a tiny bit of water on this side, not all around. Just on one side. The side that you place your filling so just a bit not too much then I'm just going to fold this over lift this side and that's the importance of you having enough flour on your surface as well to be able to lift it with ease and I've got a bit of yeah? I'm folding them not them folding that side over and I'm sealing okay so the water that I've already added to it would allow it to stick together prevent it from um, opening you can leave it as it is okay or you could do a decorative finish you could I'm gonna show you on one because I'm not gonna show you another one um, so you can use a fork to press it in and if you're used to having th things like patty, that's pastry though, it's kind of different. Use a fork to press it. Or, I'm going to do half with my fork and then I'll show you what you could do for the other half. You can just simply lift it off the surface or, as it's on the surface, press your finger in. But the thing with this one is, because you're pressing it, um using your strength to press on it you don't want to press it and then not be able to lift it off the surface at the end so you could hold it in your hand and then give it a simple press okay to seal it you want me to do another one for you or not try do another one quickly yeah yes sir it's cold water. I use cold water. I'm just going to go and do a quick another one quickly. The video will be on show my homework, so please read before you come to my lesson. Okay? And for people that want to try at home, if you want to try at home, give it a bit a try at home. Make it with your family members or on your own.
doesn't matter. So everyone in your group should be doing this next week. Divide the dough into six because you're going to have more dough than what I'm using now. Double them out. So each person should be making two. And we've got enough rolling pins. We've got enough workspace. So everyone should contribute. Yes, is it a pressing question? Uh, yeah, miss, you know if instead of using chopped tomatoes, can you just use um, you can, the tomato paste? Like, uh, the pizza one? The puree, that's a yeah. bit too thick. You can use some of that with a mixture of another sauce. Say, for example, sweet chili sauce. I love sweet chili sauce in this product. It tastes really nice. Okay, so whatever sauce, catch up with the with the um, tomato puree as you're mentioning, barbecue sauce, whatever sauce, regular regular sauce, whichever one you prefer. Okay. So only thing that we are gonna we are all gonna have in common is uh, expected to have in common is the cheese. The cheese has to be there, sauce has to be there, and then it's your dough, and then whatever you wanna use for the filling, you have to use cheese because it. Give that stretch and it help with the moisture as well. So fold this over again. And I've got my clothes all in the flour now. Right, lift it, similar to what I was saying to you, and you can just press. Don't have to use a fork, just press it. Does that make sense? Because sometimes when you use a fork or you press it on the surface, it's hard to lift up because you press it too much. I'm expecting you to even do a better job because some of you are very creative. So do whatever design on the ends as you may wish. You can fold them as well. How many of you have had um, Cornish pies or pasties? Yeah, you see they fold the edges. So it's up to you, be creative. So that one, right. Oh, I'm gonna have to do another one, but you're gonna have to go back to see. So I'll arrange it this in a minute. What I'm gonna be doing next is you know what, let me brush them first. So I'm going to use a bit of egg wash and I'm going to glaze them to give a nice finish. Okay. So they'll have a bit of sheen. Nice color. And a bit of sheen at the end. Not too much. And it's egg. It's just egg that I've was, um, I missed it. Whisk. You can put a bit of milk as well. But just one egg for glazing. And then I'm not adding too much. Just a bit. So the method is glazing. It's a finishing technique. Just for, for your um, calzone to have a better finish, better appearance at the end. Okay. Happy with that? Then the last thing before putting them in the oven, I'm just going to make holes in the top. Can anyone tell me why I'm making the holes in the top? Yeah. Um, to let the steam get out. Yeah, well done. To prevent them bursting open. To allow the air to come out, to escape. Okay. If you don't allow the air to escape or the steam to escape, it's just going to pop open halfway through cooking. And you have to be careful when um, inserting or removing the fork because what's going to happen is holding on to a bit of chicken at the moment if I just if I don't support it with these fingers it's just going to come out it's going to make a big hole in the middle or the top there okay happy with that one thing I need to uh, mention to you because we did not give the dough any proof in time okay remember that similar to bread and pizza in your seven you're gonna to have to put it at a, at a reduced temperature in the oven so if you're using the gas ovens it's gas mark one if you're using those ones at the back so it's going to be 80 to 90 very low temperature at that time it won't be cooking and you're leaving it there for 10 minutes for it to rise a bit okay then you're going to increase the temperature to seven for these 180 for the electric electric Okay, well done. Go back to seats. Listen, 